Welcome to the review and thoughts of 2020's The Night House. So, we are celebrating Women's History Month, and this is a horror movie that actually tries to understand women. So, yeah, here we go. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie I absolutely loved. This video will probably have very few jokes, possibly none, and... I, I will get into a few serious topics. Now, the... Let's see... that Yes, so, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as the end of the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers including discussing the ending. So, this movie is rated R. Hold on, I'm just going to make sure I have the... There we go. And so is this video. I may swear some in this video for those bothered by such. And I will discuss the the topics that the video that the movie brings up I have decided I'm not going to give away exactly what that you know for those who don't want to yeah it is not difficult to find out well well yeah I will say it's about grief in part and that is not a spoiler Now, the plot is, I'm going to be quoting IMDb here, a widow begins to, I'm not going to use that entire thing, a widow begins to uncover things about her recently deceased husband. So, yeah, there's apparently like a bit of a subgenre of like movies that start after the a woman has lost her male partner and then she realizes there was something that she didn't know about, which, you know, that is, that does make a lot of sense. It is, you know, the, the, um, a lot of mysteries start with the, the death of a character. I mean, I feel like, isn't the entire Law and Order, well, maybe not Law and Order, but some of those, like CSI, maybe more CSI and CIS are basically built around you know this person is dead we're gonna realize some things about them that you know not everybody knew about them there was something going on there that was was a secret and the the I think a lot of women probably fear that their male partner a lot of straight women fear that they're yeah straight or bi, women fear that their male partner is keeping something from them, and, you know, sadly, a number of men do hide things from women. You know, if you want to be charitable, you can say it's because these men think that the woman would, you know, is better off for not knowing it, rather than that they're, like, that, that it's a worse thing, but, yeah. Now, I am gonna, you know, before I dive into the details of the technical aspects, this is made by very talented people. There's a lot of skill and enthusiasm on display in the... Uh, yeah. Right, so this is on Disney+, Plus, which is, you know, how I watched it. For those, you know, so, some people think of Disney, Disney+, Plus mainly as like, oh, it's for Disney, Star Wars and the MCU, so it shouldn't have, like, adult material. As far as I know, this movie is behind an age gate. Like, if you, you know, if you're sharing your Disney account with someone that, you know, and, and keep in mind, you can have multiple accounts on the same device for Disney+. Plus. If you're sharing your Disney Plus account with, uh, you know, someone who's not old enough to be watching something like this, you can put an age rating, 
you know, or yeah, yeah, you can limit it by age. So let's get into the writing. This was written by Ben Collins and Luke Piotrowski. And I am not really familiar with their other work. Ben helped, oh, yeah, yeah, they both helped write Hellraiser 2022, which if it ever does come to Disney+, Plus, I am 100% watching, but, you know, it's, it's a Hulu movie, and, like, there's a certain reason why it isn't on Disney+, Plus, even though a bunch of other Hulu stuff is on Disney+, Plus. because I live in Denmark, we don't have Hulu, you know, Hulu... For us, Hulu go it goes. Hulu stuff goes to Disney Plus. Anyway, yeah. Uh, otherwise, let's see. They wrote. Yeah, they they tend to write together. I see. The um, yeah. So they wrote Siren, Super Dark Times, Stephanie, this and Hellraiser 2022. And let's see. Yeah. So. They are also, those are also horror movies, and, you know, Super Dark Time is, is apparently not a horror mystery, but the other two are, and, yeah, they they sound interesting. I would very much like, uh, let's see, but this and Hellraiser 2022 are the only ones of, of the stuff they've written that was directed by David Bruckner. Huh. And Akiva Goldsman directed Stephanie, which might help explain why it wasn't well received. I don't know. You know what? He has... I, I don't think I've seen anything he's directed, but he's written some stuff that is... He wrote A Beautiful Mind, which I'm not going to say that it's perfect, but there's a lot of good about it. But he did also write Batman and Robin. But yeah, I, d I don't think I've seen him direct. I would be interested in watching any of these. Like, I, they, this is a very well written movie, and I just got done watching this, this documentary on Disney Plus about it, 23 minutes, that, where apparently that was what, you know, David Bruckner read the script, and that was when he decided, you know, sometimes movies start by the writer just approaching a director that they want to work with and like pitching it or something or they just decide let's work together let's find something but this was a case where he read the script he 100 percent understood what it was and how to approach it and yeah the the yeah really really excellent job now, let's see. Yeah, uh, sometimes when there's more than one writer on a movie, it means that they're kind of struggling against each other's vision. That does not appear to be the case here. They seem to be completely on... Like, if I didn't know, I would probably think this was written by just one person. Now, let's see that. Yes. So... Yeah, uh, I have a critic quote that says, you know, confidently directed by David Bruckner from a clever script written by Ben Collins and Luke Kraczarski. The Nighthouse excels in tension building. It is both unpredictable and unnervingly restrained. And I would have to agree. They're just really, really incredible. So a major thing with this, there are a couple of plot twists. There aren't too many. There aren't too few. I've seen at least one of the major plot twists in this movie. I'm, I'm not going to spoil them. But I've seen at least one major one receive some flack. I can understand why. And I, I can't really... I'm going to explore it a little when I get into the, the thoughts section. I guess for now I'll just say like it didn't ruin the movie for me. I was... Honestly, I didn't really... It didn't strike me as, like, it, it felt, it, it worked with the movie. I didn't even really think about that it, I, I guess it is, an argument could be made that it's, it strains credulity. Some would feel to the breaking point. 
I would definitely, just, the, the twists are not too easy to figure out for, for the viewer, and it's not one of those movies that falls apart once you learn certain twists. Now, that brings us to direction. So this is the only David Bruckner movie I've watched so far. And, oh, yeah, that's right. He, he directed two episodes of the Creep sh the, the recent Creepshow TV series. He directed The Ritual, a segment of Southbound, a segment of VHS, and The Signal. Now, let's see. So The Signal is... Th that's also horror, but it, it also has sci-fi thriller aspects. Oh, wow. Holy crap, that sounds interesting. Yeah, um, d yeah. David Bruckner is also a director that I'd really, really love to watch the other. I've heard good things about VHS, and I've, you know, let's see, VHS, is that that one that, yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard good things about his segment and the, the segment made by the radio, hold on, the, ah, crap, it doesn't. Yeah, Matt Bettelini Olpin and Tyler Gillett, the duo making the new Scream movies, which I'm also quite enjoying. I, I really, really enjoyed Scream 2022, and I am super pumped for, you know, yeah, it's like a little over three weeks from now I'll be watching the new Scream movie. But yeah, so he is, let's see... Yeah, and The Ritual is also a horror mystery. Yeah, um, very much... Oh, that's right, and and Hellraiser 2022 is also a horror mystery. So, yeah, this is where, the, you know, they like to work. And let's see... Right, so, um, some critic quotes. On its surface, it's a chilling, mysterious story and you can absolutely enjoy it just as that but the film is also a dark exploration of relationships mortality loneliness and grief very very true and grieving is one of those universal yet taboo things we will do it at least once in our lives if not for people then for pets so it's extremely well important to do it well in media this does a good job and i swear i did not intend to do two grief movies two days in a row it just so happened you know i had decided i was going to do this for women's history month and the whale came out, you know, I, I watched it, um, hold on, right, right, not two days in a row, I reviewed it, although I uploaded it yesterday, so anyway, I watched it Friday, it premiered near me Thursday, and Friday was the first day that made sense for me to, but, but yeah, um, this really does a great job with grief, like, yeah, it's not, it's not a spoiler to say, basically, like, Beth, who lost Owen, like she's she's just trying to figure out how to how to deal with like you know what what there's there is no like if you want to there's there's no one who can tell you how to grieve if you want to know how to make a movie or cook you know there are Robert Rodriguez you know he made a, a couple of videos teaching that and he promised to make one for sex, which some people are really holding out hope he will, or maybe he did, and it just got to a DVD that I, I don't own every single thing he's directed on DVD. Anyway, what I'm, yeah, that was a joke. Although they're they're pretty good, the the filmmaking and and cooking stuff he's done. Anyway, you can go to YouTube, you can Google it, you know, if you if you just want to learn how to how to cook or you know, the various, there's, the, I'm, to be clear, I'm not saying it's easy, it's difficult, but there are directions, you know, if you follow the directions to the letter, you know, it might take multiple times before you get really, really good at it, but it, it might take a long time before you get really, really good at it, but grief, like, there's advice, but there's no directions, there's no, you know, one size fits all. Some some people are berated for not grieving right. Like, if you're not crying enough, or if you aren't, if you don't appear to be sad enough, some people think that that doesn't, that, that means you didn't care, which is absurd. 
everyone grieves differently. There is no wrong way to grieve. It's just important that you, you know, try try to make sure that there are people who can help you. And I say the following about judgment. Try to, to not get into any kind of destructive or self-destructive behavior because some people do and that yeah it's if you know it grief can kind of make can kind of feel like you know everything there's a there's a you know what I'm gonna I, I guess technically it's not about grief but there's um uh, let's see Uh, right, there's a there's a song called "The End of the World," and oh, hold on, does it? That wasn't what I wanted. I don't know why it's so difficult to just find. Here we go. Uh, nope, that is definitely not. Holy crap! Um, There's a, uh, there's, holy crap. There is a, a song by Skeeter Davis called The End of the World. For some reason, Google really doesn't want me to find the lyrics. And here we go. I think I found them now. I'm not going to sing. Don't worry. You don't have to, like, run screaming from the video. Some of the lyrics go, Why does the sun go on shining? Why does the sea rush to shore? Don't they know it's the end of the world? Because you don't love me anymore. Why do the birds go on singing? Why do the stars glow above? Uh, let's see. I wake up in the morning. I wonder why everything's the same as it was. I can't understand. No, I can't understand how life goes on the way it does. That's what grief can really feel like. It's like, wh why is, I'm sorry, is it me? Am I the only person who realizes that the world has ended here? Why is everyone just, why is everyone pretending like the world hasn't ended? And that's something this movie really does a great job of, of just like, because yeah, for, like for Beth, it kind of is how it feels. It feels like... Fuck it. What what are we doing here? What what is like there's a there's a very early scene you know she she tells us that that she that that her husband shot himself. And very early in this movie we see her like she's she's googled like ba basically like like uh, um yeah she's she's googled you know, handguns. He used a handgun. And, you know, she's looking at, she, she's got all these, she, she's basically got, got a bunch of images. You know, she did a Google image search or something. And it's basically like you, the movie just hints that, you know, is, is, she, is she trying to, because, you know, she says, I didn't even know we had a gun, you know. That, that's, you know, and, yeah, you know, is, is she, is she trying to find out how he got the gun, or, you know, maybe just trying to identify the gun, if, if you're grieving, even, even just being, n knowing something that you didn't, that you didn't know yet, feels like you're getting a little bit of control left, control back, you know. But is that what she's doing? Or is... Is she considering, like... Doing the same thing? You know, it's... it's, And the movie doesn't, like... It, it doesn't spend forever on this notion, but... You know, yeah, may, maybe she... You know, she, she certainly doesn't... She, she clearly feels like there is nothing left to really, like, she, she, there, there are several people close to her who offer, 
support and say you know you can you can call me um, if you if you need to to talk or if there's anything that I can do to make it to to support you during this time and a lot of the time she's you know she basically you know she tries to be polite about it but she is basically pushing those people away again this is not a spoiler you see this right away and it's not that she doesn't think that what they're doing she it's not that she doesn't care some people seem to think it's not it's that she feels like nothing they could possibly do could could really truly help I guess at this point I don't even have to say in case you're new um, yeah I am I am still grieving uh, over 20 years now now yes so some more critic quotes the filmmaker puts a formidable visual game of mirrors into practice which fits beautifully with the story's unsettling conclusion the night house works as an exploration of grief because of Rebecca Hall's incredible performance plain and simple now let's see okay yeah so some people do feel so there's a direct quote from a critic, and some people do feel this way. As a horror film, it overpromises early on and then fails to deliver on any chills that go beyond a jump scare. I understand what they mean, and for sure, like if you think if you hear that and you think, oh, you know, yeah, that might be how you feel about it. And for sure, like this isn't you know, I I I suppose I, I, yeah, I do understand why. Like, early on, it does seem like it is going to go places that it doesn't really go. And that is something that, that yeah, I, I understand why that bothers some people. And let's see. Um, right, and yeah, some people feel it, it doesn't always pay off the tension it builds. The film's story about a woman seeking closure after her husband's suicide makes the lingering unknowability of a romance feel just as unsettling as any supernatural force. Very true. Let's see. And... Yeah, this is a great quote I really agree with. This is a creepy, creepily effective excursion into terror that, if watched alone in the dark, may generate post-movie jitters. It's a quietly intense alternative to generic horror movies that provide its share of scares without the need to splatter the screen with blood and viscera. And that was something I really appreciated. I don't think... I, th I think it's just too limiting. I, I hate when people try to limit horror, because it is a genre that can do almost anything. It is... It is perhaps the single most versatile genre because essentially all you need for something to be horror is a concept that is in some way scary or at least like it's it has to be off-putting in some way and like I mean at the end of the day science fiction it has to have some kind of technology or something Fantasy has to have some kind of fantasy element, even if it's just, like, one thing. But horror? Like, you, if you if you pick a horror at random, you know, you could find something that is sci-fi. You could find something that's fantasy. You could find something that is, technically speaking, completely naturalistic. It doesn't feature anything that doesn't happen in the real world. You know, it's, it's a... So I, I really, I hate when, when, when people try to limit it. And I'm not sure that that many people are trying to limit this one. But I do really appreciate that this is a case where, because, you know, yeah, it, you could make an argument that parts of it are a ghost story. And it does things that I, I don't see very often in ghost stories. And I've watched at least a hundred of these. There, there was a... I had a phase where I tried to watch every single horror ghost story. Now, uh, let's see. The other thing was the... Uh, right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. As you can see behind me, 
it is during the daytime. Um, these days, if I'm not watching something in theaters, I'm probably watching it fairly early in the day, sometimes even the morning. A horror movie that can still scare you when you're watching it early in the morning, that's an effective horror movie. And this j just really got, like, this is this is the kind of movie where you might, like, go and check the locks afterwards, make sure that there's no window that's open kind of thing. And, you know, so, so yeah, there's a lot of movies that should have that effect that just don't. And, let's see. Mm, I think I'm going to go ahead and I want to mention this, but I don't want to talk about it before the spoiler section. So I'm just going to put it here. And let's see. So... Though the bag of tricks that Bruckner digs through are familiar, he uses them to build a kind of clanging, feverish atmosphere. I'm gonna go ahead and... Yeah, this guy also gives... Or, you know, this reviewer also gives examples. But I'm gonna... I consider them spoilers. And British actress Hall, tasked with carrying nearly every scene, grounds her performance in more than meat puppet panic. Her unraveling springs from genuine, furious grief. And it's very true, and yeah, the, just amazing. Like, this is... I don't want to take anything away from the, the technical aspects. This is definitely a movie that if the, if the lead actor was not giving a, an absolutely amazing performance, it would not work. You know, I... I guess it's some a couple of months ago by now. I, I reviewed both the Chinese original and the American remake of The Eye, and that uh, that movie, the American movie, would be bad even if they did cast a really really amazing actress. There's there's a lot of bad about that movie, but I'm not gonna go into detail here since I did an entire video talking about it. <sighs> In that movie, they cast, and I swear I have absolutely no ill will towards. Ah, hold on, I forget her name, which is not an insult. It's just a case of me having ADHD. So the, the right Jessica Alba plays the the lead in that, and I, she seems like a genuinely sweet person. She seems like a good person. I, I'm not sure I've seen her give a really good performance, and I've I've seen you know she, yeah the the Fantastic Four movies, the two Sin City movies. You know, I'm not sure that she's that great of an actress, and I just you know I I wish that she you know I, I as far as I understand she started out as like a model. And I think she, like, makes clothes, designs clothes now, you know. She is talented. I, I, I'm I glad that she found something that she is really, really good at in, instead of acting. But, but, yeah, this is a case where, you know, yeah, if, if the acting performance wasn't completely spot on, it would, the movie would not work. As the screenplay teases natural explanations for these sinister goings-on, extreme grief, nightmares, mental illness, Bruckner maintains a death grip on the film's mood while his cinematographer, Alicia Christian, turns the home's re reflective surfaces into shape-shifting puzzle pieces. So, yeah. Now, the... let's see... Yeah, so, I've been really happy with dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. You know, I've always agreed with the messages in progressive movies and shows. I think in recent years, the filmmakers have gotten better at making it biting without, like, just don't, don't hold back, because it's, like, we've given... We've given the other side so many, like, literally decades. Like, people have been talking about a lot of these issues for decades. And because we haven't been, uh, you know, confrontational enough, you know, the, the, we, we've been way too nice. And I think it's time to stop. It's time 
to to just you know you know it's important to to present the argument but don't do it in this like don't don't do it in a way that that makes the other side you know we we can't let the other side feel that we don't have the confidence or that we aren't right because we are that's why we're progressive anyway so i'm i'm going to at the end of the review itself i'm going to update this ranking with this movie but for now i'm ranking worst to best other than this and i love all of the following except for antlers antlers not okay the menu ready or not barbarian and fresh and and to be clear this is not a comedy this is a horror movie without any there's there's not really any you know yeah there's there's no comedy in this one like i said and or and yeah so this was positively received you know the the um, a, a lot of people do really appreciate it some people don't and i just like you're free to your opinion 100% as long as it's not like anti-progressive, but yeah, um, this is much better than a lot. Not all. I'm not saying all of what we got in the '80s through early 2000s. Like we had some dark years for like a lot of bad horror movies that were just like, okay, I guess this is a horror movie. Let's just have a bunch of people die in one movie. Let's like have have some really like. This movie is basically, like, I'm not sure I would change a single frame of it. And, and that's something that I, I find a very useful exercise. If you, if you go over a movie and just say, okay, should this maybe be different? Or should that maybe be different? You know, in this movie, everything adds up. There is no padding, and the mystery is very effectively gradually explored. Like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take forever to set it up it doesn't take forever like i was i was stunned by how well like and and again to be clear like there are horror movies that that you know do a really great job you know a, a while back even in some there were even some during the 80s through the early 2000s but like they manage like the movie there's always something happening you know and it doesn't have you know, yeah, I, I just mentioned the eye. I don't think it's it's not really a thing in the original. But the remake, the American remake, like, stuff will happen that's just like, okay, I mean, uh, if we look at the clock, it's been like X amount of minutes since the last time we had a big scare. I guess we better add in a big scare. It's there's Otherwise, people are going to get bored because the movie... It was made for teenagers, that's why it's PG-13, even though PG-13 horror movies are very, exceptionally rarely good. And that's just not, like, this, the, there are a lot of scares in this movie, but it never felt like, oh, well, we gotta have something here. No, it, it all comes naturally. It's always, the movie's always moving. I feel like people are way too impatient today. But this is a movie that genuinely does, yeah. Now let's see the so so yeah the opening is really great. Like the the for the first uh, yeah I I'll just very quickly at at the that's an inch. oh right because of that yeah yeah um. Yeah, the the first about two minutes. The first two minutes of the movie is the the camera telling us the the you know build, building atmosphere set, telling us the the you know we're yeah we're seeing the house and the house is important because a lot happens there and we can immediately tell that it's empty. Not because there's no one there. You know, in, in the first two minutes, we don't see anyone there, but it's empty because Owen is dead. And just, like, you know, at, at, after about two minutes, we, we see Beth, you know, re return to the, the house. And, 
yeah, it's, it, you know, she just came back from the funeral. And, yeah, it's, it's empty now. And she's not going back because, you know, the moment she opens the door, it's going to be like, yes, I'm home. I'm going to be, gr you know, everything's great now. She's going home because it's, it's technically her home. Like, I mean, legally speaking, it's her address. So, you know, the, the person who made it a home is gone and he's never coming back. But technically it's, it's, so, so she has to go back and yeah, you know, at, at, later in the movie, she, not a spoiler, but yeah, she straight up says, you know, maybe, maybe I'll sell it, you know, cause, cause this isn't, it's just, she's, she's, you know, why would she stay? It's, it's just going to hurt to stay and yeah, the very, very strong opening. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I think it's good. I, I think I will decide, I'll, I'll be 100% certain on whether or not I love it when I start talking thoughts. I think maybe... Yeah, maybe by the end of the video, I, I'll I'll try to come back to, to that. Oh, right, I think I forgot to say, I record this, like, you know, at, I just got done watching the movie itself, then I watched the 23-minute the Disney Plus documentary, then I started recording, like, literally right after, so it's very fresh in my mind. Now, uh, one, at least one critic says the ending is terrible, doesn't resolve things, there are too many questions left unanswered. I mean, I can understand why they feel that way. I... I don't know. I, I, I agree that it doesn't do all the things that we... You know, there are a number of things that we've come to expect from certain endings, including horror movie endings, and... Yeah, you know, this and the other movies I mentioned kind of challenge those. And... I think it's great. I really think we, we need to keep challenging what horror is. Because otherwise, it's just, you know, that, that was the thing. Like, the 80s, like, okay, I guess horror is slasher movies. So let's just have, like, there's just, there's a ridiculous amount of... Let's see. Um, I... Yeah, it doesn't seem like Google has an answer to how many, but I remember hearing something like over a hundred. And I love slasher movies. It's probably it's it's very high up on the list of my favorite subgenres. Like I think technically not a slasher, but the proto slasher Halloween twenty uh, Halloween nineteen seventy eight is excellent. And I've I've been very happy with. I'm not saying they're perfect, but the new, the, the H40 trilogy, Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends, you know, so I'm not saying that I don't think that slasher movies can be great, I do think that the, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, you know, I, I don't think the, the sixth one completely works, and there's some stuff that in the fifth one that's also, but, you know, depending on when you ask what, you know, what time of day you ask, I'll probably either say that my favorites are number one and number seven, you know, the Wes Craven ones, R.I.P., or two, three, and four are my favorite ones. You know, that really, really depends on just, you know, I, I keep going, going back and forth because they have different strengths, but... So many slasher movies. I, I watched a bunch of them, and a lot of them, it's just like, okay, teenagers are stupid. Let's have a bunch of them die on camera, and then, you know, in, in like, obviously stage, not the actors aren't actually dying. And then, you know, credits, and then they can go on to watch the next one. Like, a lot of them are very cynically made. Like, you can tell the people didn't care about making them. And yeah, uh, I, I really love that this is, you know, this helps challenge what a horror movie can be. And yeah, you know, when you challenge the norm, some people are gonna say that, no, you're going too far away from the norm. 
and let's see, yeah, there's no Deus Ex Machina, there's, there's no convenient writing, it all goes together. And the that brings us to the character, so yes, the, yeah, uh, Rebecca Holstars as Beth Parchin, and I, let's see, yeah, uh, really, really excellent. Critic quote, Rebecca Hall's admirable refusal to soften the brittle edges of her recently widowed protagonist in the Night House makes her a compelling variation on the usual women, woman in ghostly peril. Some people really... T yeah, some people didn't like her, and they don't like movies where you don't like... Like, yeah, I mean, she's not... She's grieving. Nobody, like... Very few people are pleasant to be around when they're grieving. Yeah, I'm probably not particularly pleasant right now. Now, let's see. And the... Um, yeah, another critic says, She tries her best to resume a normal life. She goes to a workplace, meets a concerned parent that she allotted her son a negative remark in grade assignment. She corrects the situation by striking off C and substituting it with B. The parent is not satisfied with the abrupt response. She persists arguing, we all have personal matters to deal with sometimes, to which Beth has to reveal, my husband shot himself in the head last Thursday. You know, that's why she wasn't there the day that the student came in to try to make up for, for the assignment. That's why he wasn't, you know, that's why he still has a C and you know she's she's ready to to change it to a B and yeah let's see and yeah uh, she she does a really excellent job like I appreciate that you know she's she's basically one of the things she's trying to do to one of the things she's doing to try to cope is she's she's drinking a lot you know there are multiple times you know she'll be at home she's drinking wine she you know, she goes out with the, you know, some of her co-workers, some of her fellow teachers, and, you know, she, yeah, she's, she's drinking a lot, but they, they, they're careful to not make it, like, cartoonish, you know, and, yeah, um, let's see, and, yeah, Sarah Goldberg plays Claire, and she, you know, she's really trying to, to be there uh, for Beth. And Beth tries to not be too, like, harsh when, when saying, you know, I, you know, like, like I said, basically trying to communicate, you can't help me. I know you want to. I appreciate that you're trying to. But there's nothing you could possibly do that can make this right again. And... And uh, right, Vondi Curtis Hall plays Mel. I don't think I've seen him in other, anything other than this and Daredevil. And it was, you know, yeah, he's incredibly talented. I really, really glad to, uh, you know, and and he has apparently had a long career. So that's I'm I'm really glad he's just yeah tremendously talented. And he's actually he lives nearby, near Claire, but Beth and. You know, when he was grieving, Beth was there for him, so he's trying to really be there for her. And just, yeah, it's it's very, you know, I, I appreciate that, because it is, like, I don't think anybody who hasn't grieved can truly understand grief. Uh, you know, which, which is part of why it's so important to, like, I'm not going to say that you can't make a movie about it, if you haven't yourself grieved, and certainly, like I, I've seen some movies that were made by people who were grieving, and where you feel like, you know, they don't, they, they've, they're still so deep in the grief that they're, they're not yet ready to make, to, to do a piece of creative expression that's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like being. It's it's like a it can be like a form of writer's block basically you know you just can't you can't get any further, and you know some people it does help to to it helps the grieving process to be to be working through it to be cr doing creative expression but some people also just 
can't. So I'm not saying that you can only do it, but I do think it's critical that you try to understand it. And, you know, yeah, some, some of these movies really, really don't have a particularly good understanding of it. But, but yeah, this one, like, I, I don't know. I don't know if the people who wrote it and David Brooklyn directing it have grieved in their real life. But if they haven't, they must have really, like, they, they understand a lot about it. And, you know, it, 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 like, you would think that, like, you know, okay, so yeah, there's the, yeah, there's the lived experience, so in, in some ways, it's good that someone, that, oh, I'm just gonna make sure that's not something, I'm pretty sure, oh, that's, right, yeah, that can wait. You know, lived experience, you, yeah, there's a certain logic to, you know, it must be, you know, presumably, someone who's grieving can help someone else grieve, you know, can can help them through it, they'll, they know what the, the other person needs. But there's also a lot of people who think, well, I mean, maybe it's better that you get support from someone who isn't grieving, you know, because they, you know, you need, you need an objective perspective on this kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate that this movie points out that it is possible to, you know, yeah, it presents both. It, it says you, you can help, you know, Claire, I don't think, uh, you know, she, um, yeah, yeah, you know, like, she she has kids, she has a husband, I'm not sure if, if she's had, like, a lot of experience grieving, I, you know, that doesn't really, it, it seems like she's just, she, she can try to put herself in the place, you know, she can think, what if I lost one of the boys, what if I lost my husband, you know, that kind of thing, and that's how she's operating, so I, yeah, I appreciate the movie is saying, you know, you can help if you haven't grieved, you can help if you have, yeah. And Evan Johnny Kite plays Owen Parchin. And the he does a really amazing job. Like, it's... Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I guess I kind of see. Okay, yeah, he played Toad in X-Men Days of Future Past. But, yeah, he was, you know, his eyes were covered. He had facial prosthetics, but yeah, he's, he's acted in 23 titles, and there are three upcoming, I don't think I've seen him in anything other than these two, so the, yeah, but, but he does a really, really excellent job, because there's this, like, there's, there's video from the wedding, and there's a video from, like, you know, right after the wedding, and there are a number of pictures that he appears in, and the fact that he had secrets, like, when you're watching it, you get why people didn't suspect it. He just, like, some of these things, like, he'll, he'll have, like, a facial expression that now that he's dead and she is really, you know, like, even the fact that, like, she had no idea. She didn't think he was depressed. She didn't know he that they owned a gun. You know, these things, like, it, it comes out of nowhere for Beth. So, clearly he had some secrets, and now looking back at these things, you know, it's like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe the reason he looks this way is that he was trying to keep a secret, you know, he, yeah, he was trying to hide something from her. And you have this thing of the, the, um, ah, what's the word? Like, um, the, the, yeah, tr trying to keep a secret. When you, you know, when the picture was taken, when they were still a happy couple before he committed suicide, yeah, you know, you basically, you, you look at it and like, you know, oh, he's, it, it doesn't look like he has it, it you wouldn't necessarily think oh he's he's keeping a secret just 
you know, oh, maybe he's like deep in thought, or there's there's something that he's, you know, it, it, so so yeah, really really amazing job there. And in general, like this has it has a lot of pictures of people, and that kind of thing in movies can feel very staged, and it never I. It never really felt staged. I do wanna there's there's like just there's one yeah, this this is maybe the one thing I would change. In those first two minutes, there's this part you know you do see some some pictures where they're very clearly happy together, but before that there's also this there's a picture of her looking like unhappy and it's just like you you wonder like it's you know okay maybe you you know i don't know maybe maybe the like oh actually no never mind i'm looking at it again i yeah she looks deep in thought before i'm i'm sure this was like framed cuz that was the thing i was going to say who would who would print out and frame a picture of someone looking sad like if you know was it was it her did she want to remind herself of being sad was it him did he want to think ah my wife she's so sad like who does that but no I, I looking at it again no yeah she looks deep in thought like he framed this thinking my smart wife she's always thinking kind of thing yeah yeah i so yeah we're back to no i wouldn't change anything and stacy martin plays madeline I really can't talk about her character without spoiling, but she gives a really good performance. Like, she has to, there are things that she has to carry on her shoulders that she does a really good job. Again, it could so easily get, like, cartoonish, become really, like, overacted, and, and just, and, and it never happens. There's no overacting in the entire movie. So... It's not amazing on diversity, basically, you know, it's mostly, yeah, it's, it's, you have these three white women and then one black guy, one white guy. It is, I, um, I think the movie would have been, I, I think it would have been good if the lead was black, but... I, it's not one of those where it feels like, oh, wow, why is this not a black woman? Like, that is definitely... I, I don't have very many issues with the movie... I can't believe I'm blanking on his name again. Ready or not. But I definitely think that it would have... That logically, it really should have been... The, the, you know, the lead should have been played by a black woman, not a white woman. I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable there, but yeah, um, on the wrong word. Anyway, I don't think this is a movie that really, where it just feels like, oh, wow, why isn't, you know, and it's not playing, like, it's not super stereotypical, like, yeah, if, if you don't know Vondi Curtis Hall, he is a black man, and they didn't give him, like, oh, he's, like, the help. No, no, no. He he lives nearby. He's not literally like the the you know some some kind of servant. And and it's never like him offering to be there for her is never played as oh you know black man gonna help a white person as a like because you know there's some bias that you know you still have a shocking amount of white people, many of whom would insist that they're not actually racist who think that it's just natural and to be fair a number of them have been told it's just natural for black people to be servants you know that's no the the i'm not sure i would say it really explores his experience as a black man not not really no one one thing is you know it so yeah it features multiple teachers and it actually does acknowledge how difficult life is for you know it it's really really 
you know, if you're if you're a conservative and if you're like if there's nothing you could possibly agree with a progressive on except for just like one or two things try to make it to have empathy for teachers because it's completely out of it's it's ridiculous the way they're getting attacked by conservative politicians right now you know the 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 vast majority of teachers work hard they care or at least used to they they got into it because they cared and if they don't care anymore it's because they've been ground down over a lot of years you know there's just yeah you know they don't make it a huge thing in this movie but every so often you'll have some and and yeah something i did like basically every single time we see her you know yeah she you know she goes to the the high school that she's a teacher at and like a parent confronts her about the grade that you know if you are a teacher you know my mother was a teacher before she died and my father was a teacher before he retired and like they work really hard they work all day you know some people think off oh, you know the moment they go home they're not working you know that's true for some uh, fields for sure there are some people who stop working when they go home teachers don't always a lot of teachers spend like honestly like two-thirds of their waking hours working not only when they're at the work and crap now I'm saying like obviously I'm not saying that you should have to I'm not saying that you're lazy if you only if you yeah if you don't work at home or from home or whatever anyway teachers work extremely hard and ask any teacher and either they haven't ba basically if you ask a teacher ha has a has a parent ever confronted you about how they you know how how they felt you handled their you know son or daughter they'll either you know they'll they'll say yes no i don't work with kids like you know not all teachers do or I'm sorry, I just started as a teacher. I haven't had that experience yet. You know, so it's... And, and the... They, they do a good job of, like... You know, the, the other person... She doesn't actually come across as, like, completely out of line. You know, if she knew. She, she apologizes the moment that she realizes that that's what happened. Now, let's see. What was the... Um, uh, but, but, yeah. So, you know, she goes into school and... A parent confronts her about something with her kid, and you know the the there's a yeah yeah the the you know she's like the 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 parent says we met before you know my son is Hunter and she's like what was the last name you know and she's, oh yeah uh, that's right yeah. I have several hunters, you know, I have a, a lot of hunters this year. And the parents like, how many, how many hunters? It was like, you know, because cause to her, it's like, no, 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 this is the most important hunter. My son is the single most important person named Hunter in the entire world, in all of time. You know, and it's, I'm sounding like I'm being really hard on parents here. They also, you know, the, the thing with both teachers and parents is they spend time with the same kids but they have to like you know if you're if you're at home as a parent and you're like not not like you know after after uh after you you come back from work and you spend some time with your kids the way your kid behaves when it's just the family versus how he behaves when he's surrounded by his peers and everyone you know no one wants to look weak in front of the other students so they you know even if they're a good kid they're still not going to do everything the teacher says exactly the way the teacher says it because then they'll be bullied by the other kids and now i'm sounding like I'm, i empathize with everyone anyway the the I'm, I'm not trying to be hard on kids anyway yeah she goes to work the the she gets you know the the a parent comes up and says you know so 
the way you were with my son, you know, and she, she walks, there, there's this, like, um, meeting kind of thing with, it, it looks like, I, I guess it's just teachers, you know, and it's pointed out, you know, it's, it's difficult because we have so many students in all the classrooms, you know, and just, there's a, there's a distinct, there's empathy extended towards teachers here, and I really appreciate that. There, there's an absurd amount of, you know, the, the thing is, it's not difficult to get a parent to hate at least a teacher. Maybe, maybe in general, like, you know, even my parents, even though they, you know, were teachers, they also sometimes would confront one of my teachers and be like, I can't believe you said that to him, you know. Yeah, every, every parent can be convinced to hate at least a teacher because of the, you know, there's also this sense of like, is this person good enough to take, to, to for my offspring to spend so many, so many hours with, you know, or are they gonna hurt them kind of thing you know and I do think that it's it's something that has to be you know you you do have to uh, what's the word of course you do have to worry yeah you have to care about the people that you're you know because kids are vulnerable you know but you do also have to accept, you know, a lot of teachers that are doing the best they can. Going to the teacher and, like, telling them face-to-face, -face, you did something, you know, with one of my kids that I don't like. Like, try to avoid that, if at all possible. Like, you know, the the what's necessary is for teachers to get better compensation smaller classrooms, better hours, you know, the, the, and you're not going to get that by telling the teacher that they did something wrong when it came to your kid, you know, you're, yeah, now, so yeah, to, to be clear, I'm not saying all conservatives have issue with the teachers, but if you are conservative, you should be criticizing the conservative politicians who are using, you know, who are trying to make school, you know, take money away from public schools in their various ways with their many terrible arguments. That brings us to the cinematography. The cinematographer is Elisha Christian. She has... 35, uh, th yeah, 34 finished and one upcoming cinematography credit. I am not familiar with any. Oh, she's actually, she's known for, or, or for a while, she was cinematographer on shorts and music video and such. This is one, oh, is this? It's, it's the, like, the second feature film that she's done and um let's see yeah i i don't really know these others but yeah in in 2021 she did one called the voyeurs which is also a mystery thriller and she directed an episode of beyond the dark which is a horror show and the the girl from Plainville, she, she, she DP'd three episodes. Did I say directed? I meant DP'd. And, yeah, she, she does a really fantastic job here. Um, so let's see, I have a couple of critic quotes. So, clever framing, smart lighting, and pitch-perfect pacing means that while the tension builds from the opening frames, when it finally reaches a crescendo, the results are chillingly effective. The film's use of color and lighting at points also helps this uneasy atmosphere in the cinematography was super effective at some of these scares. Absolutely true. And this is, like, 
some horror movies are effective despite the cinematography not being amazing. This one, a big part of the scares are the, the just, yeah, the cinematography and editing and yeah, it's it's really really impressive and like at the end of the day, a lot of the movie is like investigating, which like. Hollywood thankfully learned long ago it has to make that visually interesting or we're just gonna like we're gonna come gonna completely just um we're, we're gonna stop engaging with the movie because investigation is one of the most tedious things in real life and a lot of like a lot of movies and TV shows like you basically have to If everything, if every clue ends up be, uh, being, like, instrumental to solving it, then some people might figure out what's going on before it's revealed. So sometimes you'll have red herrings and such, you know. If you don't make it visually interesting, people aren't gonna, you know, people are gonna disengage, and that's not what happens here. Like, it legitimately... It's always very compelling to, to watch. And the editing is is quite good as well, handled by the uh, right. Here we go. The editing was handled by David Marks. And he He's edited 11 things in total. He, David Bruckner brought him back for Hellraiser, so that's a very good sign. They liked working together and each other's work. And let's see, other than... Yeah, he's also... A bunch of what he's edited are shorts. I guess... Uh, let's see, and the... Yeah, the other things he's edited are, are dramas. One of them is also a comedy. And yeah, so that's it's very impressive that this is this is the first horror movie he's edited, and he he does an amazing job. Um, so let's see. There's the the the. Um, There are these sequences of, like, investigation that will end extremely abruptly, and that can either be very effective or extremely frustrating. Because, like, you know, not, you know, some scenes, it's... Yeah, the, the moment that you end a scene abruptly, like, right off the bat, be careful with that. But especially if it's a scene where, you know, because a scene of investigation, that's the thing, like, this is a feature film. They have to keep the investigation going. They have to... Because the moment that the investigation is done, they either have to start building your interest in something else, or the movie has to just pretty much end very, very soon after. So they have to keep the investigation going, and the fact that you have these scenes of investigation that not only don't culminate immediately in the 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 mystery being completely unveiled but in fact smash cut like that's something to you you really can't do that just willy-nilly that's gonna really frustrate your audience and it happens on multiple occasions here and it's just perfect like it you know by the end of the movie you will understand and you know, it, it, for sure, I feel like if it didn't explain, at least it would lose a lot of mainstream appeal, certainly. But, and this is, you know, it's close to mainstream. There are a couple of things in it that are not mainstream. But yeah, and the, the way the scenes flow into each other works really well. It never felt, you know, especially with investigation, you basically, you really need to know why is like okay why is the person doing this now you know why 
you know, ba basically you have to, each time you see Beth take a different, you know, if she goes to a new place or if she looks at something specific, you have to feel like you understand, well, why, why is that the course of, it's, why, why is she continuing the investigation like that? Why isn't she doing this other thing instead? And it always did. I was never, it never lost me. I was never confused, which, you know, some horror movies work very well with confusion of why someone is doing what they're doing, but this isn't going for that. So, let's see the... That brings us to the budget. So this had a budget. Oh, huh. It um. Hold on. I th usually the budget is listed on IMDb. It is not, and it also isn't on Wikipedia. But anyway, the the yeah the the worldwide gross was fifteen point four million and. Yeah, that that does make a lot of sense. It's not like it's not quite the the big crowd pleasing horror movie that you know some others. You know, yeah, like if you want if you want a very straightforward flasher slasher horror movie that's been made recently, the twenty eighteen Halloween. You know, that one is a crowd pleaser. And like I said, I I. You know, yeah, I, I love that movie. I'm not saying it's perfect, and I get why some people really didn't like it. And I think a very strong argument could be made that the... Um, hold on, what's it called? You know, ultimately, I don't think there should be a single sequel to uh, the original 1978 Halloween. Except... Stuff like the third, you know, uh, uh, Season of the Witch. You know, I, I would have liked for it to become this series, you know, this anthology series of horror movies that, you know, they, they have Halloween in common, but that's it. You know, something horrible happens on Halloween, you know. Anyway, so this was filmed, let's see, Syracuse, New York, and... They get some good use out of the the setting, you know the the especially this this house, uh, you know, out in the the yeah a, a little bit out in nature is is where this house is and yeah like the the you know it's already scary to be alone in a house even if it's one you're used to but they they really get some some yeah some some really phenomenal effective stuff out of this this setting that I will not be spoiling and that brings us to the music which is handled by Ben Lovett now in the in the documentary the director actually talks about listening to the soundtrack for this movie every day as he drove to to set so yeah that's uh that's a really good sign that means that you can listen to it over and over and over and never stop loving it and yeah he brought him back for hellraiser 2022 so again they really they they were very happy with how it came out. And uh let's see. Yeah, he's he's composed for a number of movies. He has 37 credits total. Some of them are shorts and let's see is that um he's been yeah, he's com the first credit is 2004. Oh, right, yeah, he actually, yeah, he composed for the David Bruckner movie, The Signal, from 2007, so they've known each other for a while and been working together, you know, worked together multiple times, and, yeah, you know, he, I would have been very surprised 
if this was the first horror movie he scored because he nails it like this is really really yeah and the movie it doesn't overplay it but the the tension like it it's it grips you like it really is a absolutely terrifying movie and the sound design is amazing the you know sound design is extremely important in horror because what we hear is frequently much scarier than what we see because the moment you see something especially if you see it clearly like eventually you're gonna look at it like if you yeah it, it, you know if, if you want to get into horror movies but like let's say the idea of the visual of Freddy you're you're scared of the, the visual get like a still photo of it and just look at it and let yourself become accustomed to it it will be much less scary although the be aware the first movie you know you're not always seeing him you're sometimes just seeing his effects so it can still be but yeah and that's also you know one of the problems with the series and something that Wes Craven especially felt was a problem over over time you get used to seeing him so you know in some of the later movies he's more funny than scary cuz you can you can make something funny that used to be scary and some you know some in, some very talented directors like the the radio silence duo making the screen movies and such they can go back and forth between funny and scary very very quickly uh, the same goes for of course Jordan Peele very very talented at that and the the um, yeah i think i've yeah to to get back to so it's very important that the sound the the sounds are scary that they aren't like yeah and and you know anything that sounds scary if you listen to it enough times or someone like does of you know if someone edits it yeah it edits it in a certain way or makes it you know yeah it can be really it can end up funny and yeah the for this one they played exactly right i don't think i want to give away exactly what noises you hear but just yeah this movie makes incredibly effective use yeah i'll be talking about it in the first spoiler section this movie makes incredibly effective use of things you hear that you don't see and that like you you what's the word you don't you don't see and it's like it's a noise that you maybe sort of recognize as something like oh that's that thing but you really shouldn't be hearing it right now you know yeah now so yeah the it's not really it doesn't have a lot of you know there there's no real comedy there's a couple of bits that are like darkly it's not like we're not laughing but like beth you know there might be something said that is just a dark joke you know it's not it's not played as funny it's played as you know that's like one of the i use dark comedy a lot in, you know in part the yeah in part because of the grief and in part because of all the things that i know are awful all around the world that you know i try to do what i can to help but there's a lot that we're not going to yeah or at the very least it's going to take a very long time now the the pacing is great like i i was never bored i think an argument could be made that parts of it are slow and i use that word as a descriptive not a negative and a lot of the movie is built up you know this is like that's one thing that for example slash movies there's a lot of payoff in you know it delivers a lot of what you came to see where yeah this one yeah 
Now, the this movie is an hour, 41 and a half minutes long without end credits, 47 long with them, and I think if the first 30 minutes, if, if nothing in that time gets you particularly interested, yeah, you, you, it might just not be a movie for you. You know, I, I certainly, like, I'm, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I don't, I can't really imagine what it's, I can't truly understand what it's like to not be grieving, you know, grief has dominated so much of my life. I've been, I've been grieving for more years of my life than not, you know, I was a teenager when I started grieving and I'm in my 30s now. So the, the, I don't, I can't completely relate, but I'm sure, like, if, if you don't, if you haven't already grieved, if you aren't grieving, and you maybe don't even particularly know or understand grief, like, if no one near you has grieved, yeah, this probably isn't going to be particularly interesting to you. I, I could totally imagine that. Uh, and and certainly like you'll you know some some people will will you know say oh I've seen I've seen better than this movie I'll grant that there are ghost movies and and like mystery horror movies that are more mainstream than this this is one of the best I've seen that also tackles grief and I think it is necessary ah, crap now I'm being again I don't want to limit horror. But I think it's great when horror movies go into, like, experiences that... <sighs> Grief is ultimately universal. I don't think all horror movies should do something, should go into something that's universal. But I, I love when horror movies go into something that is, like... I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of horror movies where the fear comes from, Oh no, will this person die themselves or will they lose a loved one and starting a horror movie after like you could make a horror movie that's set before this one i hope they don't i don't want that but you could have a horror movie that culminates in owen committing suicide you know that feels like that is you know i've you know, people close to me have committed suicide it, it is like a horror movie it is it's it's you know, it's it's almost incomprehensible to to you know. If, if this is a good time to say, if you are struggling with depression, with suicidal thoughts, please try to reach out. There's there there are a number of like there there are there are there are services that you can call, people you can talk to. You know the the but but yeah, you know, knowing that someone you loved committed suicide that's yeah you know if, if there was nothing else this movie would still be a horror movie you know but it knows that t to have something else also is is very you know that is that is an effective way to actually yeah I suppose I I would argue that the that ah crap that's is that a spoiler Okay, yeah, I, I guess I shouldn't. I would mention... Yeah, I'll just say there are amazing horror movies that are primarily about the... the... the yeah, grief. You know, where it really is... Uh, yeah. So, this is where I get into the best element of the movie. So, certainly... Yeah, I think it's a tie. The the technical aspects, Rebecca Hall's performance, and the screenplay. And I, I guess if I have to limit it to one, the exploration of grief. So, the worst aspect, I don't know if that's... Oh, right, right, and yeah. Um, so yeah, the best elements I just mentioned... I would say, if that sounds good to you, it's definitely worth watching at least once, and I'm definitely going to be, if, if I if I end up not watching this movie again, it'll be because it 
goes off Disney Plus or something. Like, that's the only reason I could imagine. I try to, I try to pick a worst aspect because it forces me to say something negative about even movies I love. Because a lot of the movies I cover on this channel these days are movies I love. And it's, it's, it's often the, the thing that, like, when I'm, when I'm gonna buy a video game, I make sure to read the most negative reviews also, because they'll frequently point out stuff that can really affect, you know, so, so yeah, I try to, Yeah, I, I, I guess, ultimately, the, the only thing I can really say is, you know, th th I want to make it clear. I do think there are movies that, where it makes sense for the, the, for it to be about a white person. I'm not saying every single movie has to be led by, you know, BIPOC, but... Oh crap! Wait, do you see? Do you say BIPOC or do you say B I P O C? Ah, um, yeah, I've said it both times. Hopefully, one of them is correct. I'm sorry. I try to be a good progressive. I can't. I, I the ADHD makes it hard to to keep up with all of the. Anyway, I'm not saying every single movie, but I feel like the reason this is. That the you know and you know for sure I feel like it does help it it does explore some of the things that are unique to to women you know so I'm glad that it that that the lead is female it's not the kind of movie where yeah at, at the end of the day I feel like the reason that Beth is played by a white woman is probably because a lot of people think that white is the default, specifically white male. So this one already has a little bit of divergence, although a lot of horror movies, the lead is a white woman. So that, you know, they a, a lot of people think that it is inherently a distraction. If, you know, if, if you have some, if, you, if your protagonist is not white, you have to explain why they're not white you know you can't just have it you know it has to be oh it's commenting on like race or you know there there is something more there and ultimately i do feel like this movie probably would have had you know yeah it it very easily could be a a, a black woman you know, and at that point, like, whether Owen would still be white, like, you know, some people think it's horrible to, to have, you know, yeah, you know, that, that whites and, and blacks shouldn't be together romantically, but, yeah, you know, the, the movie could have been made about a, you know, yeah, like i'll i'll grant that some people think that you know black people are inherently less rational which is again completely absurd than than white people and yeah i can i can see some people might think that some of what beth does they would read race into it in a negative way rather than just you know representative or something if the if it was a a person of color, but yeah, uh, I don't think it's a big deal. It it didn't really, you know, it it didn't feel like you know. Again, ready or not, that should definitely be a a black um, woman. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, go going off other reviews, the things that other people you know, said was the worst thing was the ending plot holes. Oh yeah, that's right. I did I did read some reviews that said plot holes. I have no clue what they're referring to. And I did they give examples? 
I'll um I mean I haven't read the 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 IMDb user reviews that have spoilers, so maybe some I I don't know. I'll I'll I guess I can try to try to skim to see anyway. But yeah, some people really don't like the ending, and it definitely is different in some ways than what you might expect, especially from like older horror movies. If this movie had been made. 30 years ago it would have or or more it would have ended at least somewhat differently so yeah but it i i disagree i think the ending is is i i i like the ending at the very least maybe love so yeah i i don't personally think it's a big deal but yeah if you worry that you might end up hating the ending you know for for sure the ending is it's one of the most important parts of a movie, of for for many movies, not all. Yeah, I I can understand why you might hate end up hating the movie if you really hate the ending. So yeah, the thing I was most worried about was that the answer to the mystery would be a really bad one, and I'm not going to give away what answer, but. By the end, I felt like I had been given a satisfactory answer, and so so yeah, the movie exceeded my expectations. The thing I was most looking forward to was progressive horror, and or it, yeah, a horror movie that is progressive rather than yeah, and yeah, the movie exceeded my expectations. It isn't quite as um, the the progressive aspects don't um, drive the movie as much as the, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the other movies I mentioned, other than maybe Antlers, that one also isn't, it has progressive values, but it's not necessarily as, uh, yeah, but, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll very briefly go over the, the list again, so, Not Okay, The Menu, Ready or Not, and Bar uh, Barbarian, and Fresh, those are very driven by the the progressive or right and i um i should say not okay is not really a horror movie uh, there are there are perhaps thriller elements but that one is a comedy now the you know my my criteria for this is that it is progressive and it is either it is funny and or scary in some way and it is like um, I guess the term aggressive progressive has been tarnished since that was what Jimmy Dore used to go by but yeah um, some you know progressive but not like you know just just politely asking people to you know not destroy the world and kill us all now the trailers do give too much away. I, f I found a one minute trailer and a two minute trailer and you shouldn't watch them if you, you know, before watching the movie. But they do also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. I, I'll, I'll grant that it was difficult to market this without spoiling anything it's, and, and still make it really compelling. And I do think the trailers are worth watching. I would just recommend you wait to do so until after watching the movie. And I do want to say, even if you did, you know, maybe you already watched the trailers and then you came to this review, there's stuff in the movie that is not in the trailers. Don't worry. There's, you're not gonna, it doesn't, it's not everything that is, that is given away there. Now, ah, you probably should try to avoid looking at the posters. The the yeah, there's basically there's basically three different posters, and 
um, yeah, well, I'll just say that at least one of them has a spoiler. So if you haven't already looked, and that's, of course, it's difficult to completely avoid looking at a poster for a movie that you're going to, you know, I guess I'll just, yeah, the, the, it, when you go to Disney Plus, like, once you click on the title itself, the background doesn't spoil anything. And let's just see if I can find, huh, okay, so that doesn't need to, maybe this will, and maybe it won't. Okay, so I'll find it here then. Yeah, if you, you know, the, the uh, thumbnail, I guess it's called, for the, for the Night House on Disney Plus, doesn't spoil anything. You can, you know, if you if you see that, it's not going to give away the movie. Now, uh, let's see. And yeah, once you have watched the movie, I do think that the covers and posters are worth looking up on IMDb. They are exceptionally well made. And that brings us to. Rotten Tomatoes, and it has an 88%, so that is certified fresh. Based on 209 reviews, only 26 of them are rotten. The audience score is 69, nice. Based on 250, more than 250 verified ratings, the average rating is 3.7 out of 5. So that does, yeah, the average critic rating is 7.10 out of 10. So, yeah, you, you, it is, it is more critic friendly than mainstream audience friendly of a movie. And, yeah, the, the critics consensus led, led by Rebecca Hall's gripping central performance, The Night House, offers atmospheric horror that engages intellectually as well as emotionally. And that is why I love it, and that's why a lot of critics uh, have positive things to say. The audience says, The story is a bit slow and confusing, right up to an ending that will leave some disappointed, but Rebecca Hall is terrific, and there are some truly tense and scary moments. I, th I think way too, too many people are just used to mainstream movies holding their hand through through mysteries. Like, I would definitely say by the end, I knew what had... The, I, I didn't find it confusing, but I, an argument could be made for slow. I really appreciate they didn't say boring, because I, that I take issue with. Calling this movie boring seems completely absurd to me. But it is, technically speaking... It's, an argument could be made for slow. The the story itself, the the movie itself moves fast enough that I'd, yeah, I mean, I guess compared to some movies, slow. But like, seriously, look at some of the bad movies from recent. Anyway, it, well, not that recent. Anyway, like I said, eighties through to early two thousands. That brings us to Metacritic, where it has a 68 out of 100 from critics, based on 36 critic reviews, 26 positive, 10 mixed, 0 negative. And I guess I can try to... Oh, one critic did say that there are moments in the movie that are outright silly or worse, boring, and even though Hall does well, she can't quite compensate some people say that the runtime stretches things yeah now the so so yeah I disagree with those but that is what some people did feel this has a 6.8 out of 10 for users 58 positive 22 mixed and 7 negative are the 87 ratings and if you want to see what there's there's one negative review and let's see yeah the the
Yeah, I, I, okay, the, the, I, yeah, I'll go ahead and quote. They say that it's never scary or even tense, so I completely disagree, but that, yeah, some people will feel that way. I, I, I hate to think of people watching one of my videos and feeling like I told them that they are just objectively wrong in how they feel about a piece of creative expression. I don't really think that that's... But um, there are a number of positive and, let's see, and several, uh, what, what are they called again, um, mixed reviews, user reviews for you to read if you want to know uh, what people did or didn't like. So the IMDb has, uh, hold on, yeah, 590 user reviews and 456, 57 of them don't have spoilers. I read the top voted 100 of the spoilerless ones and of the top 100 spoiler free ones, 12 gave it 1 out of 10, 2 gave it 2, 10 gave it 3, 1 gave it 4, 7 gave it 5, 9 gave it 6, 28 gave it 7, 19 gave it 8, 13 gave it 9, and 7 gave it 10. So, yeah, some people really, really hated it, but a lot really loved it, and the... Yeah, I don't think I need this anymore, so I'll go ahead and get the... The overall rating is 6.5 based on 57 and 308 IMDb users voting. And yeah, 30.2% gave it 7. 25.1 gave it 6. 15.1 gave it 8. 11.4 gave it 5. 4.6 gave it 4. 4.5 gave it 9. 4.1 gave it 10. 2.1 gave it 3. 1.8 gave it 1. 1 1.1 gave it 2. So, you know fairly well received but not like bowled over not like absolutely amazed now the the special effects yeah i'm i'm going to start by quoting mdb trivia with its mainly practical effects rebecca hall found the film a refreshing change after all the green screen work she had done on godzilla versus kong in 21 yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, they they really did incredible with the with the practical effects. And it is like today CG can be photorealistic. So not all movies need to but practical effects like it's difficult to completely practical effects are still technically fake. It's not, you know, no one actually got hurt the way that we saw them get hurt but it is you can tell that there's something there like the brain just we we the brain is hardwired to detect when there's something physically there rather than just like something that we we don't completely buy is is real you know and yeah, they, they really did an incredible job, and I appreciate, like, some of the stuff that's practical in this. It's like, do you realize how much trouble you would have saved yourself if you went with CG? But, you know, they knew it's going to be worth it. It's going to be much more effective, and I'm really, really glad that they did make that choice. Like, it's... Yeah. Now... There's also some really good stunt work, and so yeah, the the it is not the most violent movie, and it definitely has less violence than a lot of people are used to from horror these days. And you know, I guess from the '80s and onwards, there's you know, horror movies tend to have violence and. Yeah, I, I'm i glad that there is as little violence as there is. And, and there is 
the, the what there is is effective you know it doesn't just you know in a horror movie ideally you want the violence to to get a reaction and if it's a horror slash comedy maybe the reaction is to laugh but you know you don't want to just be like wow that didn't have any effect on me at all and you know as I maybe I use this example too much maybe I need to come up with a different one but one movie that has a lot of violence and where very little of it is actually effective is Jason X that movie just like and and you know yeah to some extent some of the problem is that a lot of the violence is like it's these effects that you just don't no, yeah, even even some of the f stuff where the effects are convincing, it's still not like it does. It still doesn't really have an effect on you. But for sure, some of it is that the effects are not convincing. And I'm just gonna make sure. To, there we go. So the I don't think I want to talk too much about. Very briefly, sometimes I talk about the, the sexual material uh, in the movie, and there's not, this is, there's not a lot of sex in this, but I will just briefly say it is a movie that it realizes that sex exists. You know, some horror movies just play coy and is like, you know, I don't know, you know, if, uh, yeah, but... And, and, you know, The Take recently did a really excellent video talking about that movies today, a, a lot of movies today don't have that much sex, uh, you know, and they in part pointed to, like, the MCU, which it's it's true. It's wild how, how little sex there is. Anyway, the, the it's an excellent video in general. Like, I don't think I've watched a single bad video from The Take, but the um, something i did briefly want to say is there are multiple women in this who are conventionally attractive but the movie doesn't play up their looks and i really appreciate that you know it it is a movie that says that sex exists and women you know some women have a lot of sex you know with with one partner and it doesn't try to like you know a lot of horror movies basically like well you know it's going to be r rated there's going to be a lot of violence let's put some sex in that'll get people to to go to the theater or rent it or whatever and i i always I'm really happy when a movie. I, I don't. I am sex positive. I'm not saying there's something wrong with a lot of sex. You know. I uh, hold on. Did I put like an example? Like I think the piano teacher. I'm really, really glad that there is as much sex and as like direct sex. You know, in in that movie. I think that movie. If you took out the sex from that movie, you just like you'd completely ruin it. Like, the movie needs the sex to be as overt as it is. Now, did I put in a movie that did... Let's see. The... the um, yeah, I don't really have an example of a movie that... Anyway, you know... I, I don't know if, I, I don't have an example ready of a horror movie that uses sex really well, but they exist, is what I'm saying. This movie, they knew that they didn't need to bring in sex because that's not what the movie's about. You know, that's that is like one of the things with grief, you know, yeah, you, the, the if. Uh, at this point, I'm not speaking from personal experience. I'm speaking. Um, yeah, I know. Don't worry. I'm not talking about. I'm not gonna talk at all about my own sex life. 
just to just to put you <laughs> yeah anyway I am I, I have read that people who lose a partner uh, to you know like people who have a who whose partner dies that can really like you know as essentially you know for, yeah for some people it means that they just don't want to have sex at all you know there are also some people that go the other way and have more sex you know no judgment but yeah this is a movie where you know she's she's not interested in you know or or at the very least she certainly isn't interested in having sex with someone else you know not the the yeah you know like hypothetically if she could somehow get owen back she you know she's still attracted to him but there's not a, another so yeah i i really appreciate that it is a movie that you know claire you know she had two boys she has two boys as far as I can tell, they're not adopted, so she must have had sex with her husband, and there's reference to Beth and uh, Owen having sex, you know, so it's it's not it's not that women can't be interested in sex, but they're not the movie doesn't turn them into sex objects. I really appreciate that. there's there's actually there's a shower scene in this, which you know, there's a lot of horror movie shower scenes. And there's no male gaze. I really appreciated that. It actually just is. No, she's she's gonna have a shower. It's it's that's a normal thing for people to do. You know, the fact that she's conventionally attractive does not mean that the camera is going to ogle her. And in fact, the scene does have a specific point, which I'm not gonna give away here, but it's not just to have a shower. It actually, yeah. It's one of those recent horror movies that actually subverts expectations. Like, a lot of people are going to think, oh, shower scene, this is it. Let's, you know, let's ogle the, the you know, the naked chick. But, no, it actually, there's, because because a lot of them, it's completely pointless. It's just there to, to get a, a naked woman into the movie. Because that's going to get guys to, you know, straight guys are going to recommend the movie to their guy friends. And here, you know, yeah, the scene doesn't usually have a point, but here it does. So I really appreciate that. So I... Right, this is one of the rare cases where I do not put anything in the description box. But yeah, the... The, the only thing, the only special feature on Disney Plus is what happens at the lake house the the it's it's basically a behind the scenes and yeah it's it's well made you know i was honestly hoping that it would go a little bit more into detail about something specific that it didn't end up going into but it went into basically everything else so this is where i give it my personal rating and yeah i rate this nine explorations of grief through horror out of 10 and a an updated list of dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years ranked worst to best other than this uh, including this wow i should anyway i loved all of these except for antlers Antlers, Not Okay, The Menu, Ready or Not, Barbarian, Fresh, and The Night House. This is my new favorite, and it's not that I, I still love Fresh. I, I re-watched it because it had been six months just, like, what, a couple of days ago? Still love it. It's, you know, I, I stand by every single positive thing I said in, the, in my video of, of that. But this is actually even better than, than that, so, yeah. And... Let's see, I think that, yeah, I'll, I'll just briefly say, this is one of the things where I'm really, really glad that we have something like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, because they really do give a very clear, like, if you just look at, like, the filmmaking, 
then this is a very solid movie. Like, the thing that some people... Like, I feel like a lot of the people who didn't like it, and again, I'm not saying, you know, you're 100% you're free to not like it, but it seems to me that a number of them just had different expectations and didn't realize that, you know, I, I don't really... I, uh, I guess early parts of this movie do, do maybe get you to think that the that you know do ba do maybe give you some expectations that are n that the rest of the movie do not fulfill but yeah i i i think it's very important to to make a distinction between this movie wasn't what i expected this movie was bad because those two things sometimes they're the same but a lot of time like I'm, I'm like, like I said, I, I mostly do good movies these days. I, I, it doesn't bother me to read a negative review of something that I like, but it frustrates me when I see a lot of people saying this was bad when really it seems like it was just it wasn't what they expected, and that sucks. For sure, if you watch a movie that you have certain expectations of, and you don't have that much time to watch movies, and you end up, you know, being frustrated, I just, I wish that, I feel like there should just be a different rating system, like, you know, the, the ratings, the, if, if you give it between a 1 and a 10 or something, that should be specifically, purely for, is it actually well made? Because there are movies that are not well made, that are higher rated than movies that are well made. Because the movie that wasn't well made, people think it's funny that it's so bad. Or people felt that it delivered on what they expected. And then there are movies that are actually really well made, but it wasn't quite what people expected, and maybe the marketing sold it as something else because they didn't know how to appeal to the people who would like it. A lot of the people who ended up watching it didn't like it. You know, it, um, yeah, it's been like, I, I forget exactly, but like, I guess a couple of months ago or something, I did a video on Jennifer's body. I'm not going to go off on a huge thing on it in this video right now, but, or in general, I just want to say that was a movie that, like, if you watch it and your expectations are realistic for it, like, there's a lot to love in that movie, and if I recall, that one is actually rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. That's It's very rare these days for me to do something that's rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. But I read so many reviews of people who said, ignore Rotten Tomatoes, ignore all the negative critic reviews. The critics didn't realize what it was, and so they rated it based on something that they thought it was going to be that it absolutely wasn't. And just, yeah. So, this is when I get into the thought sections. There are spoilers for the movie, everything in the movie, including the very ending, from here on out, the rest of the video. So, it's okay to keep watching if you want, but a lot of what I say is not gonna make sense if you don't, if you haven't watched it. But, yeah. That, I'm just gonna make sure to note the time code. First section of spoilers, notes taken while watching. So, all on paper so yeah I really love how it builds atmosphere from right away you know the house feels empty because he is dead like I also mentioned in the review and you know I, I I appreciate the detail that you know they just got back from the funeral and I'm not even 100% sure I can imagine it's the, the it's Owen's mother you know but yeah, a woman related to Owen, and it's it's clear that, you know, she, she even says, I realize that your family is kind of spread out. You know, it's difficult for her to be with a lot of her own family. So, yeah, you know, this, this woman, you know, Owen's relative is saying, I'm here, we're here, you know, you can, you can come to us if you need, you know, help grieving Owen. And she says, thank you, but no thank you. And, like, 
you know, very, very shortly after she throws out, you know, she was given this dish in, in like, you know, some, some kind of food thing. And she just throws it out. N none of it, she doesn't eat any of it. She doesn't, you know, and it's just like, if she eats it, if she spends days eating it, or gives it to someone or something, you know, if she eats it, it's going to remind her of it. Every every bite is going to be sour and bitter. And if she gives it to someone else, just like, hey, somebody gave me this, I'm not going to be able to finish it. Can you please, you know, I, I know you have kids, some, something, you know. She's probably going to end up saying... I was given it by a relative of my dead husband. And, you know, then then she's like, she, she might feel like she's pushing her grief on that other person. So, yeah, she ends up just throwing it out. And, you know, she's, yeah. Ba yeah, basically the first things we see her do are say thank you but no thank you to, to offer of help and support throwing out the the food that's just going to remind her of it drinking wine and you know she's got the the suicide note in her hand and you know it is this like at first we don't know you know we we find out what he wrote not you know i don't know maybe 20 minutes i guess i could just very briefly find the the time when she reads the the actual note oh wow yeah okay so yeah around half an hour into the movie so you know and at first she claims she doesn't know what he's referring to there is nothing but you know yeah we realize you know she she tells Claire later I know what he means. You know, I told him that when I was 17, you know, she, she's told almost no one about this, but when she was 17, she she was technically dead for, for you know, her heart was, was stopped for four minutes and then she was brought back. And basically, you know, she says there, there is nothing after, you know, and the the you know we we later find out that the 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 nothing that there is kept whispering in Owen's ear over and over and over that he had to kill her and so she kept so Owen you know basically spent their entire marriage trying to trick the nothing I'm yeah I'll be calling it the nothing because it is tech you know I, f I, I don't feel like it makes a huge amount of sense for me to nickname it something. You know, it's not the Grim Reaper. It's not the devil or, or some kind of, you know, but yeah, the, the nothing. Because it is technically a being. You know, it speaks to her. It physically affects her. And the, the you know, that is one of the things, like... Yeah, as as someone who's who's grieving himself, countless times, it's you know I I I've thought about you know what you know I don't I don't have some illusion about you know obviously at this point there's nothing physically left of her but yeah you know is there anything after that is something that you think about when you are grieving and I really really appreciate how this movie went into that and I, I nothing that we find out about the nothing made me wish that they hadn't gone there the the yeah all of it just absolutely worked right I get yeah I, I hadn't even thought about silly I guess one thing that one of the critics found silly was the probably the the ghost sex the and yeah what can I say when I watched it it absolutely worked for me I I 
you know, obviously, I trust me, I did not have that kind of relationship with my mother. But yeah, you know, from what I understand, if if you're grieving the a romantic partner's death, yeah, the the um, the idea that they that they could come back and you could be in their loving embrace just one more time, and that's like she spends a lot of the movie, you know, wanting to to touch, to be able to touch him again, and for him to touch her, and that's just yeah, like you know. It's I I yeah they they really I'm I don't know if they've if they've had the experience of of grieving a romantic partner's death themselves but the writers and director one hundred percent understand that that is something and you know yeah I'm sure to some people the the scene played as silly but I think it's important to acknowledge like I'm sure there were people who watched this movie and were like. That's just, that's exactly what I went through, or I'm going through. And they'll feel less alone, and grief is one of those things that really makes you feel alone. You know, it feels like nobody could possibly understand, because nobody knew that person the way that you knew them. Maybe they know a lot about the person. You know, I, my father was married to my mother, and, and they spent, you know, yeah, they, they spent a, you know, I don't think I want to give away exactly how long, but but yeah, over a decade together, and you know they they were together my entire life, and I'm sure that he knows things about her that I don't, and he knew her in a way, you know, and and we tried to support each other in our grief, and I don't know, I I hope that we were able to to help each other. The the I I don't know if I. You know, at the end of the day, I can't. I don't know what it would have been like if he hadn't. You know, he he definitely did try to be there for me. You know, in the in the early years, and I think maybe also recently, but I, I don't I don't know. Anyway, let's see. That brings us to the yeah. She, you know, she's watching the the wedding video where you know when they. The, the, you know, it was kind of funny, the, the, apparently the song, like the, ra the, the wedding DJ was like, I wouldn't have picked this song, but like, you know, if you don't like this song, you, I guess you have better taste in music than the groom. So, raise your hands if you've got, oh, yeah, I'm seeing a few hands, a few people have better taste in music than the groom, you know. Yeah, that's that's very, you know, clearly he's like a friend of of Owens or something. You know, that's the that's the kind of razzing that you you do to a friend. Or I don't know. Actually, I guess possibly it it could be like a, you know, they hired someone and he's you know, which is which is also fine. You know, no, it doesn't seem like anybody's really minds it. In the, you know. And, you know, yeah, she she looks at his side of the bed, uh, which is empty, and she, she touches it. The, the, you know, it's not that she logically believes, because, you know, we, we are told she's skeptical. She's a very skeptical person. But she doesn't, you know, she feels like she still needs it. And... Yeah, it just it the way that it's filmed, edited, and acted just perfectly gets across. And let's see, yeah, the you know there's a knock at the door, and I like the detail that she, you know she grabs the phone in case she needs to call the cops. And uh, I think it was slightly open, so she you know she she closes it, and the. Yeah, and, and then, you know, there's an outline of the nothing. So we actually, we see the nothing very early on, you know, and and near the end, the nothing even, like, uses the image of Owen to communicate with her. And, 
yeah, I, I really thought they did a, a great job. Like, it didn't, it didn't, like, spoil the, you know, because, like, yeah, I mean, honestly, early on, I thought that was Owen. You know, I thought that was the ghost of Owen, and, yeah, the, the, right, I guess, just briefly, um, so is there, does the movie believe that there is a, an entity afterlife. I'm not sure that it's supposed to be read as there is literally something with willpower as much as she like it's it's the fact that her she needs an answer. She needs to know if she could have him back. She needs to know if there is something after death. And the ultimate answer is there is nothing. And the the you know the the fact that you know he yeah he said that Owen you know the reason Owen became a serial killer of women who look like Beth is the fact that he, you know, the, the nothing kept whispering in Owen's ear that he had to kill her. I, I don't really read that as there literally being something, though, I, you know, it's, it's valid if that is how you read it. I read it as when he heard that she technically did die once, basically, like, he, you know, it was a form of grief. He was grieving, you know. The he was he was terrified that she would, you know, yeah, that that she would die soon. And the the you know, I think, um, yeah, I I'll uh, see. yeah, and and yeah. So you see the the outline by the door and suddenly she wakes up and she you know she was on the floor and let's see uh what does that mean okay something squeak yeah some some something made a squeaking noise and then there were footprints, and then she hears the gunshot, and, you know, Mel says later, it wasn't me. And, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, she's, she actually starts to doze off as she's seated in front of the laptop. And we see that she did a search for, for guns, and, yeah, it is straight up, the, the, you know, it's, I, f I forget. I think they do. S yeah, yeah. She's she's not sleeping enough. I th I feel like that was said at at some point. And let's see. The yeah, and you know she watches the the video that was a you know I guess like a maybe honeymoon video kind of thing, and you know they were. You know, she was so happy, to, and and he seems happy as well. So she, you know, she stops watching. She basically can't stand to watch it. And we get this hint, you know, he feels a need to keep, you know, to keep, she thinks that he can protect her if he builds the, and I'm going to have to, oh, right, right, I think I wrote it down here, the, oh, I didn't. I didn't write it down. Why did I not write it down? That's a bad idea. The um, crap. Because that was that's the that's not the thing. Okay. Uh, fuck me. I'm gonna right. I'll I can find it. I can find it in the movie and in the and then write it down. It is called Kerdroya. I'm gonna go with that pronunciation. Kerdroya. 
was one of the things he was doing to try to to protect her. And I appreciate that that you know through that the movie actually you know explores you know I can yeah speaking from experience like uh, I've never done the things that Owen did in this movie but yeah um, speaking from experience as a straight cis man we are willing to do ridiculous things sometimes and and really like go go to great lengths to protect you know our romantic partner that's so so you know the the I I yeah I think I'm gonna briefly get into you know basically like the the you know Beth spends the film trying to get Owen back Owen spent a lot of their marriage trying to keep her from dying and basically I, I guess I'll, I'll grant that the following is perhaps this is interpretation more than confirmed in the movie, but from you know it seems to me that he suicides because of what he became in the process of trying to keep her from dying. You know he he believed that she you know yeah like he like he writes there is nothing after you you know you know basically i i think something we're we're meant to to take from this is that we have to accept death it is natural and you know i i don't blame anyone who can't and i i'm not you know i'm not claiming that i certainly not in all cases i i but but yeah, that is a very healthy outlook. So I really appreciate that the you know that yeah uh, and and yeah. So like I said, my interpretation is there is no entity. The the nothing is basically the the you know what the the things that the nothing says to her. That's her realizing you know that because she has if if i you know let me know if i if i you know if i'm wrong about the following but i believe that everything that the nothing tells beth near the end or yeah over the course of the movie i believe all of it is something that she could put together herself you know they just they figured it would be more dramatic if that was how you know she put it together but i mean he even said the the nothing the voice of the nothing says there is nothing after you die i am that nothing i i get why you know you could interpret that as you know there is a being there but i read it as when someone dies there is nothing you know there there isn't nothing nothing is going to change the fact that they died nothing is going to make it okay that they died you know you can you can get to a point where you can you know accept they are dead they're never coming back that kind of thing but there is a nothingness when someone dies it it leaves a hole in the hearts of those who loved them and i feel like that's more what the movie you know and and i get like for sure if you expected this movie to end with a being you know and and i think that's why you know if if you don't agree that the the you know if you if you interpret it as the nothing is a being for sure i get being frustrated with the ending because in your mind it's still out there you know and and some horror movies do end like that and some of them aren't even frustrating, but I get why some people wanted there to be, you know, and and I just, I, I would love the movie less if there were, uh, you know, and I would argue there are a lot of movies where you can get that, you know, like if, if you want a movie where, you know, you have a supernatural force killing people 
and you have people fighting to kill that supernatural force, like, yeah, you know, watching, watch one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, you know, the only truly bad one is the remake, and the, you know, the, the sixth one comes close to being bad, but there are few things here and there that are, you know, this, it comes close to being bad, though, but the, the, you know, yeah, so, and I'm, I can imagine there are probably some more recent uh, horror movies that are about fighting a, a supernatural evil. So, but but yeah, the the um, that is my interpretation. Now let's see. Right, but but yeah, you know the the happiness on the the I'm I'm gonna keep calling it the the honeymoon video you know basically like she wasn't angry as such she just she thought it was a little silly she thought, like you don't have to build the entire house by yourself we can you know we can pay people to do that and you know he like he he does take a break from it and and go near her and that's actually yeah like the part where like he comes close to her and I'm sure within like a few seconds if she had kept running the video you know it would have culminated in him like hugging her kissing her that kind of thing and she doesn't want to see that she wants to feel it but she doesn't want to see it so that I, I really appreciated that detail you know they they managed to both hint that there was something there that later gets fleshed out because, you know, why is he so insistent on building the house himself? And then you also have this, you know, you, you also get across that in her grief, she, she can't bear to. You know, some people can barely watch the, the videos of the person that died. Other people obsessively watch the video, you know. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, he wrote use it well in this book of the of the floor plan and you know yeah th at, at the time we're like what is what does that mean but you know yeah he he was using it as a way to confuse the evil that he was convinced was after her you know so so basically like by the end of the movie you know ag again in my interpretation, the answer to why he committed suicide, which is, of course, one of the fundamental ones, is after all this time, he, you know, he managed to take a step back and say, I've become a serial killer. I'm a, I'm a monster. You know, so he wrote the thing that he thought would comfort her. He wrote, you're right. There's nothing. There's nothing after you. You're safe. Because that was where his mind was at, you know? She wasn't thinking that she was in danger. She hasn't been thinking that since she was 17. But he's been thinking that since she told him. So, you know, the... the and, and maybe it was also in, in a way to, like... To, to try to reassure, you know, to, to say, no, 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 there is nothing, you know. In, in my opinion, the when she thinks she sees him, that's her mind filling in the gaps. You know, she, because, because okay, let me, I'll, I'll try to briefly walk through. She sees a picture on her phone of someone that she says that can't be her. She knows it looks like her, but she doesn't have a blouse that looks like that. And... Ah, uh, let's. Does she? I think she sees multiple pictures of clearly other women than herself that that look similar to her on the phone. She sees them not long after in one of the nightmares. She sees these women running and jumping, you know, into the water, and that's like she's trying to figure out, you know, it, yeah, the the. And, and the, yeah, she, she starts seeing multiple women who look similar to her, you know, r running into the, you know, jumping into the water and being in the, the other house in the woods. 
but nobody else sees this. I, I appreciate that early on it establishes there's no physical evidence of this, because she seemed to receive these texts from Owen. She called, they're static, but it sounds like his voice, and I do believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that the voice of the, uh, of the nothing is Owen's voice. They might have done, like, a filter to it, but, you know, so there's a there's enough of a resemblance there that she would at first be be tricked be uh, uh, yeah and i think when she you know her realizing that the man that you know the the love scene as they call in the documentary the ghost sex she that's her realize that's that's the nagging voice at the back of her mind saying he's never coming back he's gone you know that's that that's that voice coming to the forefront you know it's it's her realizing no it can't possibly be him you know again my interpretation which is no more valid than anybody else's and the uh, you know so so yeah the the let's see the the folk rock that plays on the you know suddenly that you know clearly it's not like an alarm she set or something the 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 stereo will come on folk rock will be playing and she you know turns it off i think that was probably something that he used that owen used to to you know when he was killing a, a woman to to make sure that nobody could hear the screams and you know the the let's see that one does appear, you know, it, it's, that starts playing before she knows he's a serial killer. I think that was her basically, like, figuring, you know, was he hiding something, and that's... I'll, I'll grant that that one is a, a, perhaps a stretch from my, you know... But, but yeah, and she sees the reverse plan for the mirror house that is in the, the woods, which... The movie makes such great use of these mirrors, and, and it just, yeah. And, yeah, so, yes, then we get to the where she gets the texts from Owen, and, you know, she writes back, who is this? Because she's like, it can't possibly be him. And he writes something like, don't be afraid, or something like that. And, you know, static on the phone. Now, if we accept this as a nightmare, I mean... I couldn't tell you how many times I dreamt that my mother was still alive. Sometimes it's like nothing happened. It's like almost like, oh, it was the day after that she, you know, yeah, like the dream is taking place, you know, uh, yeah, before she died and it's nothing. Sometimes in the dream she would return from a long vacation or something and just, yeah, the the so so yeah i can i can confirm from personal experience dreaming that the person you're grieving the death of is still alive that that happens that's not some kind of yeah you know i i think that was maybe also something where people were like no no, no that has to be a ghost and like again it's valid if you if that's your interpretation but my interpretation is no ghosts, no, it's all, basically, it's, it's her, what we're seeing is what's happening in her, the, the things that we see that you have, that, that you can't explain as literally happening, are the things that in her mind are going through, you know, so, yeah, the, the, you know, she starts worrying if he was maybe having an affair or something, from, from just one picture, you know, the, the, like, don't get me wrong. Like cheating is awful. Um, I what what I always say is, if you find yourself legitimately attracted to someone that you aren't in a relationship with, like if you find that you just can't, you know, not sleep with that person, like you know, I guess you can you can talk to your partner about if the you know if you could have an an open relationship and that would you know. Or, you know, if you just, if you can't stop thinking about that person, you know, maybe end your relationship with your current partner and then go after that other person. But don't cheat. I, there's no, just don't cheat, you know. 
the the let's see um yeah in my opinion there's no good you know cheating is automatically bad it's fine to have an open relationship as long as that's what you agreed upon with the the person or people that you're in an open relationship with now the but but, but yeah you know finding one picture of you know like that's you know so so yeah basically we we realized that he did like he had a lot of these pictures on his phone but at first she just sees the one and like yeah you know in her mind like uh, we actually we we learned that he never had sex with any of these women you know he was he was killing them in the mirror house in order to lure the nothing away you know and the uh let's see Hmm. What was the? Uh, I guess no. I th yeah. I think I said everything that I really want to. Yeah, and and you know, she runs out and she sees him naked near the boat, and then again suddenly waking up, and you know that that is for sure the thing. Like her, like very suddenly waking up and have you know apparently she slept on the floor kind of thing like <clears throat> you know and she, right she also says that owen never used to sleepwalk before the house you know and like if i understand correct like in real life like sleepwalking you know that is just a th like yeah there's like a um what's it called you know that is the thing that happens in in real life it doesn't you know yeah in real life nothing supernatural actually exists but yeah the <clears throat> uh let's see but but yeah you know and he was apparently he did apparently undress before committing suicide on the boat so you know but so so yeah she's seeing something that he did right before and this is you know this is her mind reconstructing basically she figures that you know that must have been yeah, yeah maybe on some level she thinks did he stop and look back you know did he before he committed suicide did he stop and look back at me wondering if i would be okay without him kind of thing you know and the uh let's see so he goes uh, it, right, right. You know, she, yes, yeah, she suddenly wakes up and she apparently slept on the floor instead, even though we saw her go to bed in her bed. And yeah, I think it's just, it's the stress and the, the, the pain of the grieving that's leading her to uh, sleepwalk the way that his grief thinking that he, that she was going to die soon, you know, and, and I think, you know, like, Thankfully, the the amount of, like, you know, men who actually love the, the woman they're with, like, it's thankfully not, uh, uh, hold on, let's see, I need to, okay, starting over. There is, sadly, a number of men who kill women, including the woman they're with, and I think... A lot of men probably fear that they'll end up doing that, you know, or or that like maybe not quite. There's a there's a fear, you know. Probably everyone who loves someone else has some level of fear that they're they're hurting the person they love because that is, you know, when when you really love someone you know, at least in the honeymoon phase, the idea of hurting them is basically, like, the worst thing you can imagine, and, yeah, you know, he he was scared that he would lose her, and, you know, the, the, um, let's see, y yeah, I think I have, so so yeah you know she wakes up on the floor and the texts are gone so so yeah she go she did go to sleep 
you know, yeah, a lot of what we see, you know, there's that one part where she opens the door, the camera pans, she's on the, you know, and sh as she's there, she sits, you know, she wakes up, and then we see that the door is open, but the other her isn't there. In my opinion, the, the, you know, as, as far as I can tell, she does basically, um, let's see, she did, she seems to, to realize that wait, wasn't I just at the door and saw myself and now I'm waking up there, you know, that is like, yeah, you know, on some level she she believes that there is some kind of, you know, entity that is doing these things. And, yeah, like, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's maybe herself, like, she's, you know, she's sleepwalking, she's going around opening doors, kind of thing you know plus a lot of these things are like she sees it in the nightmare and then she wakes up and it it's you know it's no longer true like the the text messages so yeah re really appreciate the let's see yeah and you know she says that's not a picture of her she doesn't have a blouse like that and you know Claire says from what he t told me, you gave him no reason to roam. That's pretty much, you know, there's there's almost no, uh, like, the you know, there's almost no mentions of sexuality in the movie. And when they're there, it's, you know, like, like I said, like, that doesn't make her sound bad. And, and Claire isn't, you know, shaming her or anything. You know, so, yeah, you know, I, I quite appreciate that they realize because because obviously like let's hypothetically let's imagine a rewrite no mention of a sex life between them obviously a lot of viewers are going to be like i mean maybe that was part of you know but no the movie makes that clear the you know they were sexually active they they were happy in in that regard and let's see. Yeah, and the when they're at the, I guess it's like a bar or is it a club? I I don't really go out, so I don't I, you know. The the I, I I'm not really a social life person. Anyway, the the um yes, so the let's see. Yeah, um, you know, that, that other teacher who, uh, you know, retells this, like, he's apparently, he's basically, someone has tried to communicate to him that they didn't think he was a good enough teacher. You know, and he does basically sound like he maybe used to care, or, you know, may maybe on some level still does care, but he just doesn't think that it's very realistic that he would be able to really inspire his students. And, you know, that's again something that, like, teachers are, you know, some people who don't know how difficult teaching is might sometimes judge teachers as, oh, they, they aren't, they aren't good enough, they're not trying hard enough. And, you know, something I noted at, at this point, every so often someone will accidentally say something insensitive to, to Beth. I, I really appreciate, you know, and, and like, I think basically every time they apologize, you know, it's, it's not, but, you know, and, and actually, yeah, like, you, it's a movie that paints a picture of grieving as basically very, very isolating, and the people will try, and, and again, it's not, I don't think the movie is saying that that's what always happens. It is a depiction of a person's grief, not every person who's grieving goes through this. And her isolation is, you know, part of the, that, that is something that the, the, she's, what's the word? Uh, she, you know, she, she feels bad. She doesn't like the way that things are the, the, uh, what's the word? Um, 
you know, yeah, p people are offering to, to help her, and she feels like that they can't. But but yeah, every so often someone will accidentally say something insensitive, but they'll very likely apologize right after. But just, it brings it to the forefront again, you know. And she brought the suicide note, she keeps it in her purse, you know. And yeah, the you know, she reads it aloud to, to the others, and this is when we hear the the you know what's in the note and yeah let's see which is also a huge like i really appreciate they didn't try to turn that into some oh no it was all along it was this completely opposite you know no it actually basically it turns out that what he meant by it was something that she you know she understood it when she read it, but it didn't really, like, it made her wonder why he was thinking, you know, she didn't realize that he was obsessing over if she would die from the, you know. And that's also, like, a lot of men don't, you know, we're basically socialized to, we shouldn't share our feelings, you know. So, yeah, he he didn't talk to her about the, the fear that, that she would die. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, she turns down help from Claire. And then, yeah, and this is when she explains about, you know, the 17 year, at, at age 17, her heart stopped for, uh, for four minutes and she saw there was no light at the end of the tunnel, only tunnel. And then, you know, suddenly she wakes up. The, the, let's see. Yeah, yeah, you know, she hears Owen say, you know, wake up uh, and something about the door. Yeah, and, and, you know, Claire is gone. I really love that, that cut because it does, like, she, you know, she rests her head on the, the, on Claire's, ah, uh, what's the word? You know, basically, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, you know, Claire asks, are you sure you don't want me to stay? And, and Beth responds, maybe just till I go to sleep. And, yeah, then she wakes up. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't a cut there, actually. The, the, basically... Holy crap, they did a really great job. Um, I mean, the lighting changes. Yeah, I guess it might have been an in-camera thing. But but yeah, you know, Beth, Claire is trying to help Beth, and suddenly she's gone. And yeah, she sees two women run, jump into the water. So, so yeah, this is that part. And she sees the clothes, blood, and footprints, which, you know, that, again, you know, that is her trying to cope with his his death that you know if he did come back after shooting himself there would be f bloody footprints and let's see yeah so she get she uh let's see yeah so she yeah she takes it, right he carries her to the boat and sails to the other, which I guess might also be something that's at least one critic thought was silly. And let's see. I th it, yeah, I guess it's her. Yeah, this is when she sees people in the the house, and she opens the door, sees herself asleep on the sofa, and the. <coughs> the folder that has the pictures of the other women that yeah you know the the women oh that's right yeah the women similar that look similar to her that she saw run into the the ocean she sees the the pictures after seeing them in the in the nightmare but, but yeah you know in in my opinion the the it's that she is perceiving she's you know she's extrapolating 
if there is one picture of a f strange woman in, you know, her partner's phone, maybe there are many, you know, and, and so she checks, and the folder on the phone is VAR. I can't help but think if this is maybe variation or variant or something like that, because they're all pictures of women who look like her, Beth. And... Yeah, and Mel says that he doesn't think it's good for Beth to be alone in the the woods, and she feels like, is he trying to hide something from me? And, you know, it is. he does admit later he knew that there was another house in the woods. And, it, yeah, yeah, and she, you know, when she tells him, he's like, it doesn't make a lot of sense, and, you know, he's he's trying to, yeah, trying to hide it, and she finds the the dolls with the the pins in and apparently it was like inspired by like a voodoo doll or something like that and yeah and and Mel tells her you know one night I found Owen in the woods and he told me not to tell you and then he does give the, the details and you know he said you know, Owen told me he had urges and he was struggling to keep them at bay. And, you know, he says, you're going to have to forgive me, but I did not ask what urges, you know. And let's see, then the... Um, yeah, yeah, he, he... You know, one night... Mel found Owen in the woods with a woman who looked like Beth, and at first he thought it was Beth. And let's see. The yeah, and and Beth finds the gun, the books, among other things, the Kerdroya, the doll, and the the maze set up. And uh don't know what that means and then the yeah then we have the the creaking floorboards the footsteps the thud <clears throat> and we again see silhouette movement and the the again you know the like footsteps and a thud that is probably the sound of owen you know yeah, ki killing one of the the variants, and let's see. yeah, so she goes to the the bookstore, and they say they don't keep track of the the things. And you know, at first it looks like oh, I guess it's a dead end. The you know she's not going to get anything, but then she sees that that's where he took the picture of that you know of of one of the women of of Madeline. And the you know she confronts her, and at first Madeline is like frightened and calls the the. And I guess he never does show up. What a jerk! But but yeah, she she thinks that you know maybe this woman is dangerous, and I really really appreciate like there's so many horror movies. I fucking hate when horror movies have like women being just com oh irrational and emotional and they just can't you know and they're screaming and there's a no she's being like the way she approaches Madeline she's she's calm and collected and you know yeah you know the questions at first glance sound weird but Madeline did have a weird experience and she is she's ready to to tell you know the the yeah and you know she said we flirted we had drinks we didn't have sex and see. yeah and and claire is worried for beth and let's see And, yeah, you know, and, and Beth, you know, shouts, you know, I'm leaving tonight, so, the you know, if there's something left you want to, to, you know, tell me or something, you know, 
to the if if there you know at this point she thinks maybe there is a, a ghost and Madeline shows up and you know how did you know to come I've been here before you know and she had a dream similar to the one that that Beth had that actually okay fair enough there must be something then if she also had that dream like recent yeah I get um I guess the 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 idea of fearing that maybe there is a sort of contagious I still don't really buy that there's an entity but yeah the the fear that something is going to happen to Beth you know like Owen feared that for a while and now that you know Owen is dead the you know Madeline had this dream because I yeah she said I just had that dream she isn't talking about a dream she had a while ago and she explains she you know he showed her the other house and made her that's it he made her touch the statue the statue is you know there because because remember by this point Beth has also touched the statue you know so there's definitely something the the statue has some sort of like um it it's it has a there is a connection between that and the the things i i'm still not convinced that there is a an an entity i i think there is a you know there are multiple people who thought there was an entity you know but but yeah the let's see yeah and you know he Owen held her, he cried, kissed, but he squeezed her neck, and then she said, you know, she asked him to stop, and then the, you know, yeah, and, and he did stop, so basically, Madeline was the first woman that he, the first variant he tried to kill, and he couldn't bring himself to do it, and, and, or, I suppose it's also possible that he was the last attempt, and he realized he couldn't do it ever again. It, it's one of those, certainly. And, you know, yeah, the, the, let's see, yeah, and there are lines like, you know, hold, hold it back, end it for good, about the, you know, and, and yeah, it's that thing of, like, will it will it end the actually yeah I suppose maybe that's maybe Owen became convinced that at some point he would make maybe he would eventually kill her he wouldn't be able to stop himself and that she would be safer with him dead you know it's yeah you know, in in my opinion, we get enough of an answer, but I I get why some people wish that it was. And you know, Madeline says he was basically he was giddy about the other house, and that's also like basically she feels like so this woman knew him in a you know knew something about him that she didn't know. So that's you know obviously something that's very that can really hurt to know that someone you loved and trusted there was something about them that they didn't share with you that they were very happy to share with others right and yeah she says I'm still here come get me and she finds the dead bodies in the basement and takes a shower and the music starts playing and the yeah yeah, I already mentioned the. I really appreciate the shower didn't have male gaze, and yeah, there's the line. Please come back. And yeah, and and he wrote here with, or or I suppose the nothing wrote here in the mirrors. Yeah, that was very yeah. And again, we see you know, Beth really badly wants to touch Owen. In a in a personal intimate way, just one more time, at least one more time, and we can have the the footprints and the nothing 
holds her, runs its fingers across her. And apparently, like, they did this with, like, fans and, like, just, yeah, it really, really impressive. And, the, you know, then the, the, the nothing says, I'm not Owen, you know, no, I'm not Owen, Some, something like that. And we see in the mirror, we see the mirror in the other house. Madeline is smashed into the mirror by Owen. And then Beth. I appreciate that this is one of those horror movies where, as far as I can tell, everything that we see is also something Beth sees. You know, nothing is, like, just for the audience to see, but not the, the character. I, I think sometimes it works well. I, I do think that Sinister makes good use of something that the character doesn't see, but the audience, like, in my opinion, it's that the character is perceiving it. He's not seeing it 100%, but it's he's he feels like something like that is happening, kind of thing. And and to be clear, I, uh, there, yeah, there are some parts of Sinister that I know. I, I did a video on that, but some of the things that he doesn't, that the protagonist doesn't see, but that the audience clearly sees, I, I like the way that it, uh, but, yeah, and we see there's Owen dealing with one of the bodies, and the silhouette is watching, let's see, and, yeah, and we see all the, oh, m multiple phone w of the variants in the house, and, let's see, yeah, and we see that, you know, what Owen does to them the silhouette is doing to Beth and she even gets she she gets con not quite contorted but but like forced into the same position as the doll and yeah you know the the nothing explains you left the night we met you know when she was 17 I've been with you ever since and telling Owen to send you back to me. He wouldn't. He sent them instead, trick, you know, tricking me for a while. And... Right, this is when he picks up Beth and folds her like the doll. And we see the two moons that... I gotta say, I... I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it. It really made me think of, like, eyes. Like, watching kind of thing. And... Right, I, I appreciate that, uh, you know, um, Beth calls Claire, and, you know, she, who did say, call me anytime, you know, and Claire has gone to sleep, because it's really, really late, you know, so she doesn't, so she leaves a message, and the message does, of course, get Claire to, to come, that's also something I really appreciated, like, she actually did show up. It wasn't this thing of, like, oh, you know, the source of potential. Which is, again, like, I, I really think it's very important in these movies. You know, yeah, there at the end, a woman helps another woman. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't always have to have, like... For, for so long, we had these movies where a man has to come in and save the woman. I will acknowledge a number of slash movies do not have that. It is a woman saving herself, but, you know... Let's see and yeah, so so Claire shows up <clears throat> and sees the mirror cracked, right? So yeah, actually something something must have happened there. Is it possible that in the well, yeah, yeah, the thing we saw was the like at at one point the nothing smashed Beth's head into that so. In my yeah, I I figure she was basically sleepwalking to, and and did that you know that that kind of thing, and I really do appreciate that you know basically at no point does anyone else see the nothing like they're near the end it cuts it it intercuts between Claire trying to you know trying to find Beth and help her and then you know Beth stuck in the in the nightmare. And, let's see, yeah, and we see, you know, Beth on the boat with Owen in the note. Where is Owen? Gone. But you knew that. 
you know, the moment that it started intercutting, Claire looking for for Beth and Beth in the boat, I was really worried that it was that that was just a false bit of of tension building, and that ultimately, you know, Claire wouldn't show up until everything was resolved anyway, when, you know, it, I mean, I suppose an argument could be made for what I, what I mean is that Claire would be too late and that Beth would already be dead or, you know, because then the intercutting might be, like, distracting from, from Beth. And, yeah, you know, the nothing says, he couldn't protect you. There is nothing after death. Only me. Or I, I am the I am the nothing after so, something like that. And yeah, Claire gets Beth from the boat and gets her back to you know and and she looks back. Beth looks back and Claire. Or wait, is it Claire? Is it? Because I feel it was was Mel also like like I said, ADHD. Can't really remember. Yeah, yeah, Mel is there. I forget if it's Mel or Claire, but one of them says, what are you looking at? There's nothing there. And she says, I know. You know, I get why, and, and then it just ends. I get why some people feel that that's an unsatisfying ending. In my opinion, the critical thing was she has accepted there is nothing after death. She is never getting Owen back, and she has to find a way to live with that. I don't think we need anything after that. I really, really don't. I, I get, I already said that, um, yeah, you know, the, 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 that is, so, so yeah, you know, an argument could be made that it is a somewhat atheistic read of this, you know, it's a, the, the movie doesn't really seem to support the idea that, that some religions have, that there is something after death, or at least anything positive. And let's see the. Yeah, I want to briefly in the in the documentary, they said that. You know, they they point out that Beth runs into danger, which subverts expectations, of, you know, female protagonists and horror that they're always that they're always scared and they're trying to get away from the the thing, but she's always running directly into danger, and that was. Of a great subversion, and that was so. That's it for this section. So, final. Let's see. Yes, final section. Holy crap! It's got to be a long video. Final section is notes taken before watching. So, the. I'm going to go ahead and, huh, okay, there we go, yeah. So, the, yeah, I copied in some critic quotes, and, yeah, okay, so this person, this is a user review. This makes no sense to me, but um, yeah, he says being vague isn't intelligent. So many films these days just skip over that little part where it all comes together, where the plot thickens. They avoid massive plot holes and just look the other way. Okay, so I don't even know if that's... Is he saying that there are plot holes? I already mentioned I don't think there are any plot holes in this movie. Anyway, there are holes in... Holy crap. Wow. Okay, yeah, fair, okay, so I'm going to address this. He says, there are whole scenes of this movie that have absolutely nothing to do with anything. They are only there to be scary and mysterious, but don't further the plot or are even explained in any way. Um, so, so, yeah, um, every scene in this movie is important to, not all of it to the plot, but... It's there to further the themes. It's all about the grief. But yeah, uh, all I can say is this per this person must never have grieved because I can't imagine... Anyway, whatever. That's... Yeah, L like I said in the, in the review, I think some people just didn't... You know, yeah. They, they didn't... 
Because that, yeah, you know, yeah, I, like I said, I, I don't know how to, I can't imagine not grieving. So, but, but I'm sure, yeah, if you don't understand grief, uh, yeah, sh I'm sure the, some of those scenes, the, because, because for sure, I will grant, not all of it is, is like plot, but the thing with, you know, the scenes are not explained, but I mean, it's, she, the, the, you know, the, it's nightmares. The reason that she wakes up somewhere else is the sleepwalking. Like, nothing in this movie goes unexplained that needed explaining, in my opinion. Anyway, one user who says the film can be divided into two halves, where the first half presents a typical haunted house story, the second half takes a darker, more twisted and psychological turn. Ultimately, okay, so yeah, they... The, the following I don't agree with ultimately becomes too unclear and convoluted. But but yeah, I, I see what they mean. And there's definitely some, some convolution going on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a, another person who says some of the scenes with the ghost were downright silly and distracting. I mean, I guess if you're just... If you're not... Like, this is a film where I immediately, like tuned into what it, what it was going for and from the very like literally from frame one and it never like left that it it always played exactly right like i think some of these people they just haven't watched bad horror movies because there's there's so many horror movies where it's just like uh okay it's a horror movie so let's like i don't know if this character dies i guess that's scary uh, maybe, maybe there's some, you know, let's, let's have this happen, that happens in other horror movies I've seen, I don't know why it happened there, so I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not clever enough to understand why it definitely shouldn't be here, but, you know, they, just, it, it's frustrating when I see such masterful horror as this go unappreciated just because people weren't really, it wasn't really their kind of thing. Now, uh, yeah, another critic quote. This film deals with issues like suicide, depression, and mental illness, and I think it makes use of them very efficiently to make you feel sympathetic and scared at the same time. A meaningful metaphor for depression and suicidal thoughts. Exactly. Thank you. Some people didn't even seem... I, I feel like that's a pretty important thing to, to note, that this is about suicidal thoughts. And coping with loss, you may be disappointed by this one if you take it at face value without trying to interpret it. The horror is meaningful because of the symbolism and the acting drives it home. It focuses on the real horrors of life such as death, depression, mental illness, and most importantly, the unknowns of what happens after life. And let's see... Um... Yeah, this there's one person who said that they cringed when the film tries to justify the husband's becoming a serial killer out of the duty to protect his wife. Yeah, for for me it just it worked. And let's see. Right, and yeah, so this was so this is the the um yeah, these are the things that I ended up not seeing in the review. The sounds that go bump in the night, the wet footprints on a dock when no one else should be there, the writing in the fog on a shower mirror. These beats are brilliantly handled by Bruckner and Hall, who understand that uncertainty is the scariest state of being, especially at night. The jump scares and shadow figures, the eerily suspended rules of gravity and physics are also among the things that are scary so that's the end of the video hit me up in the comments let me know what is your favorite horror movie that uses grief as a major metaphor you know and you know the so yeah a, a couple that are like you know yeah stuff that that i especially horror movies that i especially connect with with grief this there is oh I, I I always get this title wrong so I gotta make sure what was it is it it's don't look now yes 
Then there is the Babadook, and I, yeah, there are, there are others, but those are the most, those are some of the most prominent in, in my mind. Those are some that I've, you know, yeah, three movies that I really, really hold in high regard. I think they do amazing at exploring grief and, and using horror in, in, yeah, so. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, as far as live action goes, the which these days is The Mandalorian. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.